Sure. And I'm gonna... uh, first of all, question is, uh, Carrie, are you taking, because you're the new secretary, are, are you taking uh, the notes for the minutes? Yes, I am. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you so very much. Uh, we'll, call, we'll call the meeting to order at 7.03. And Judy, do you have a flag? Judy. You are muted. I, I have. I have one upstairs. Oh, uh, no, no, that that's okay. All right. We'll we'll just we'll forego the pledge of allegiance this month. Uh, I want to I want to welcome and thank everybody for uh, joining the Zoom meeting tonight. This is uh, it worked out great last month, and uh, again, uh, thanks to. Uh, Robert Montgomery for suggesting this. Uh, hopefully this will be the last month that we have to meet with Zoom and uh, maybe next month we can meet in person, but uh, as of, uh, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Uh, any new members out there uh, or relatively new members? And Aaron, you're a, I know you're a longtime member, but uh, we haven't seen you in a while. So uh, why don't you start and then introduce yourself? I'm Aaron Seibel, um, Living Pioneer, KJ6 at BUV. Um, been a member for super long time, but I tend to work um, in the Bay Area. So I'm gone during the week and back here like Thursday nights. So live in Mace Meadows. All right, well, thank you. It, uh, it's good to see you again. Yeah. Any other new members or relatively new members? Uh, hearing none. Yeah, uh, my oh. name is Andre King. I'm Dennis King's grandson. This is actually my first meeting. So glad to be here. Good, well, welcome. Uh, did you take the ham cram? Were you at the ham cram where you got your license? I okay. was. Good. And uh, anybody else? K67I, Robert and Jackson. Uh, Robert, it's good to see you again. Any other new members or relatively new members? Okay, well, hearing none, uh, I think everybody, I hope everybody got the, the email about the cancellation of Party Party this year. Uh, if not, uh, the annual bike ride that, that we've always been a, a part of, we've always provided uh, SAG support uh, to the bike club and they, they've asked us every year to do this. Of course, last year it was canceled, so we didn't do it last year. And then again, they were hoping to hold the ride this year, but uh, I just got the email uh, a couple of weeks ago that it has been canceled for the year. Uh, so it's, uh, we won't be able to participate in that. Uh, again, we look forward to that every year, but the, uh, the, because of the COVID is, is still present that uh, they just decided uh, there wasn't enough time for the riders to train. And so uh, it's been canceled for the whole year. So that's our, our next event will, unless there's a, an emergency where the Red Cross uh, once asked the ham club to set up a, a net, an Aries net, uh, unless there's a, an event like that, uh, our next event will probably be the uh, field day in the last weekend in June, it, if we have it, uh, somebody ha somebody has to uh, offer to uh, set up a site uh, because we haven't had enough uh, participation 
to hold the, the we used to hold, have the uh, club hold a, an event every year, usually up at Daffodil Hill. Uh, but the last couple of years, there wasn't enough interest in, in a field day event. So unless there's a, enough interest or somebody offers to uh, volunteer their house again, like Joe did a couple of years ago, uh, uh, that will be the next event unless uh, unless nobody unless there is no interest again. Uh, the local clubs in Calaveras and El Dorado always have uh, always have uh, some uh, venue where they host field day. Uh, so you can always join them if they have it this year uh, also. But uh, as we get closer to June, we'll let everybody know what's happening. Can I make a suggestion? Uh, Joe, go ahead. Yeah, I think maybe the right thing is to have, like if you are really interested in having this happen and you wanna help do it, like help arrange it, um, why don't we get like two or three people to volunteer to be like a committee to do this? Because the problem is there's a lot of stuff to do. Like you have to get a site, you have to, you know, once you get a site, you have to get people signed up to come operate uh and maybe get equipment for more than one person and stuff like that um so there's a look there's a kind of a lot for one person to do but maybe if there was like three people on a committee to do it that might work so if you have some serious interest in this happening like you'd like to come operate and do stuff on field day um uh why don't you like volunteer or so actually you can send me an email with that because i'd probably do it if there was a couple other people involved but you know i'm probably not going to do it again being like the only person doing it which was kind of what happened when we did it at walmart the last time uh so there was a little help from a couple other people but but it was kind of me and one other guy not in the club right now who actually arranged the site um so um you know i don't want to i don't want to do a field day all by myself Right. right. Yeah. Yes. But, you know, if there's, if, if I'm going to do a field day all by myself, I'm going to do it in my backyard. Right. Because it's right there. Uh, <laughs> but, but if we want to do something else, like go up to, you know, um, people in the past, we, well, we did the Walmart parking lot one year and then we've done a couple of years. They've done the, the, by the gate at Mount Zion. Uh, there's also a park in Pioneer that you might be able to do it in if, if we talk to the people in Pioneer, you know, there's a bunch of places that we might be able to do it. Um, but we need like to get two or three people who are interested in putting all the logistics together to do this. I, I if, if, if we want, we can always have it up at Daffodil Hill again. Uh, I know Martin Ryan, the sheriff, he's the owner of the property and I know him very well. And we've always, uh, he's never said no to us. That's a good location. However, it is true. Daffodil Hill has been closed permanently now. So they may, right. not, they may not want people up there. I did see Aaron, Aaron had his head up, his hand up there. When we had it at the Walmart parking lot, did that generate any interest in the ham radio from other passerbys or was it? We had a few people come in. That was kind of one of the ideas of doing it at the end of the parking lot in, mm -hmm. in Walmart. We had a few people come by that that you know like were interested, but it wasn't a huge public thing, right? And we probably would get as many people putting it at Daffodil Hill and putting like a sign facing the road saying this that's what this is. Did we do any? Do you think we, if we we could, we could drive any more traffic to us if we maybe did some sort of like free local advertising on Facebook or or radio or something of that sort to get more people to come by and take an interest? That would be the thing that the group of people who does this would have to be responsible for doing. Sending the email right now, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the sorts of ideas that we would need if we're going to make a successful field day site. So you know when field day is, right? It's it's the last, it's yeah, the yeah. fourth weekend in uh, June. Uh, June. I always think of it as the same day as the Pride Parade in San Francisco, because that's also the fourth weekend in June. I was thinking of it as the death ride in the Sierras. Uh, yeah, I think it is. That's, that's why it's July. Is that July? It's July. No, I hate it's that. hotter then. <laughs> they want it to be really hot for death ride. Yeah, I'm good with, I'm good with that. <laughs> Hence the name. Well, you're up at 8,000 feet, so it, it doesn't get that hot up there. <laughs>
Uh, so a- anyway, if, uh, if, if people want to have it at Daffodil Hill, just let me know. And uh, uh, I'm sure Martin Ryan, uh, because it is permanently closed now, uh, he, he wouldn't mind. So, uh, and I, I believe it's the last- You don't mean Daffodil Hill like over on the side with the farm. You mean like in the parking area for Daffodil. Across the street from Daffodil Hill, yes. Right. Uh, there's plenty of parking there. The Boy Scouts have, uh, have come up, been up there a couple of times because they always get their merit badges at, there at uh, field day. So th- they would be probably interested in attending. But uh, all, and again, all of the, we need a committee to put this together. And uh, like I said, if you, you don't need to worry about the venue, I can work on that. But uh, you know, we do need a committee to generate, you know, to see if there's any interest in holding this. Uh, Joe right. doesn't want to do it by himself, so I, I don't blame him. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, that, that, that's the, the upcoming event. Uh, as we get closer to July, we'll, we'll think about having a uh, barbecue again, usually down in Pine Grove. Uh, that's, uh, it's always been uh, popular. And we get we get some interest from passersby coming up uh, uh, through the area on on that holiday weekend. But then we uh, barbecue at field day. Barbecue we we could the Red Cross has as, as in the past has provided the food. I don't I don't think we could do that again this year. But uh, uh, we we can see uh, we can see about the the food. Uh, and that's, that's always been an issue because I, I need to know how many people are going to be attending so I know how much food to buy. And if, if there's no interest, then that's the reason it was canceled uh, the previous years uh, because there, we, uh, there, there was no interest. So I, I wasn't going to go buy a bunch of food and uh, have nobody show up. So it's uh, so, and again, so as we get closer, we'll probably uh, can see what the interest level is in uh, operating there. Okay. All right. Make it potluck again. Potluck. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah. Yeah, we did that last. That last time, that was the thing we did during field day. Was we ate. We didn't make that many contacts, but we ate. <laughs> All right. So let's go on to the next item, whatever that is. Okay, the next item after uh, upcoming events, uh, and again, uh, we're going to have the Christmas luncheon at the end of the year in December, uh, so that that's uh, always something to look forward to, and uh, basically that's it for upcoming events. Uh, John Stetler, uh, is he on, and if you are, uh, can you give the treasurer's report? Well, I'm on and off, but uh, right now I'm on. We'll see if it lasts for the whole report. We started the, the month with $1,954.15. We had no income. We paid the post office box rent of $56, $90.80 to Volcano Telephone, and our webpage a fees renewal, $179.88, thanks to Joe for taking care of that. We reimbursed him, uh, leading us to a closing balance of $1,627.47. Unreconciled, because the bank statement's not in yet. Have you heard from the DMV about uh, the trailer? Have heard nothing back from DMV about the trailer. All right, thank you. Uh, any questions about for John on the treasurer's report? Uh, okay, hearing none, uh, thank you, John. Uh, does anybody have any questions at all about anything uh, so far? Uh, uh, any, any questions about the club and uh, anything? I do. Okay. I do. Um, I had the uh, since we weren't meeting uh, people, I weren't, I wasn't seeing people. So the uh, club shirts 
that were still not given out, I distributed those. So those are all gone. Uh, Carrie has the two club shirts. There's an, uh, a large and an extra large that if somebody wants one, they can purchase it from the club. She's, she has them. Um, the name tags that I had, I distributed those. I still have James Hollab Hollabaum. Um, I'm going to uh, go to his house. I'll call him and give them to him sometime when he's home and he still owes for this one. I got um, dues and name tag money from Alex Sharp. He gave me cash. So hopefully we'll meet next month in person i can give this to john and i think that's it well, thank you judy uh when are you moving uh, we meet with the realtor monday and so in the uh, next couple of weeks uh, we'll be putting the house on the market oh okay yeah. well i guess that's good <laughs> yeah. you're still around yes we're still here okay <laughs> uh any other questions before we move on to the the show and tell part of the, the presentation okay uh hearing none uh howard are 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 you on Is, is Howard here? Yes, he was. Yeah, he is. Oh, I, you know, he may have been the person who just disappeared. Oh, no, Howard's iPad's still on. Where is he? Oh, yeah, I see his fingers. Yep, there you are, Howard. You are muted. He's muted. Here, let me, I, I will click the ask to unmute button here which should get something to show up on his iPad so that he can unmute. Yeah, you know. Uh, for some reason, I have to ask him to unmute. I can't actually unmute him. Well, he should be hearing us. You're still, you're still muted, Howard. You need to get yourself off mute. Yeah, they give, the, uh, they give the meeting organizer the ability to mute someone. They don't give them the ability to unmute them. <laughs> you can say ask to unmute, but I think it pops a box up on their screen. They have to hit yes to. Okay, you are still muted, Howard. Uh, there we go. You. Yeah, okay. There you go. Anyway, uh, the idea was that uh, we'd uh, give everybody an opportunity to um, uh, show something in their ham shack and um, uh, talk a little about it, something they made, some project, something underway. Um, just kind of uh, give people an opportunity to um, let the group step, it, step into your ham shack. So, um, I could go first. I'm trying to uh, determine how to um, uh, get my item into the uh, picture. Maybe if I uh, <clears throat> put my item of interest on the desk and then uh, uh, turn it around like so. There we go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a uh, called a Station Master 2. And you can see a lot of uh, switches and different uh, jacks and so forth on it. Um, this device was, uh, was made by uh, a ham radio operator back, uh, back in the uh, Midwest area, electrical engineer. And he had uh, several pieces of equipment that he wanted to be able to operate in a coordinated manner. So uh, he developed this device and it uh, allows uh, uh, 
uh, different microphones to be uh, uh, plugged in and uh, uh, jack for a key and uh, a number of uh, toggle switches uh, across here to switch uh, amplifiers and, and radios and receivers. So it's pretty comprehensive uh, uh, jacks over here for, for uh, ear headphones. And it uh, uh, intrigued me when I was back at Dayton and he won an award for this as a homebrew uh, project that had utility in the ham shack. And so anyway, I picked up some literature from him at that time. He wasn't selling it. He said he thought he would develop this as a kit that people could uh, put together. So uh, anyway, I uh, uh, bit for the kit and it's uh, got uh, uh, four, four different uh, PC boards in it, all connected with a uh, uh, computer cable and uh, a whole box of parts. Uh, and then you had to order parts, uh, all the different components to uh, uh, for the various boards to uh, uh, finish it up. So they had a list of parts available on Mauser Electronics, so on file. So I ordered the all the parts to uh, uh, populate the boards. <clears throat> and started in and they said uh, you could build this uh, uh, kit in 10 to 12 hours. And I thought, oh, that's good. That means probably a day's time I could build the kit. And I, uh, it ended up taking me about 25 hours to build it. Uh, there was also a, a second uh, box, smaller box that uh, had a lot of coaxial connectors on it and a uh, cat five cable that uh, goes between the station master two and the, uh, in this, this other uh, box of, uh, of coaxial connectors and relays. And the uh, uh, idea was that you wire all your amplifiers, it'll take up to three amplifiers and three radios. And you could, um, <clears throat> wire all of those to the the other box. I won't take a picture of it because it's under my desk at the moment and I don't think you could see it, but <clears throat> so there was a secondary box as well. It took about um, five hours to wire that. That was the, 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 the quick box, the quick to put together with all the coaxial connectors and the CAT5 cable connection. And um, it's also got a uh, uh, screen on it. I think you could see the screen, a little rectangular box. And the screen would show um, what connections you made and what equipment you had operating at that time. So it's possible to use um, one radio and, uh, or say three radios and share a single amplifier uh, without making any any additional connections once everything is wired up. And just a matter of flipping the toggle switches and you can um, change between radios and uh, amplifiers. So it's really handy and you can also change between uh, different microphones. If you wanna switch microphones among radios, you've got a three microphones uh, two microphones that you can uh, utilize uh, uh, among your th a selection of three uh, transceivers so or three receivers. So it's a, a really unique uh, little box and uh, it does take a lot of patch cables uh, to make it all work. Um, and I was a little uh, dubious whether I had wired everything, you know, populated all the boards correctly and put it all together correctly, but everything worked on the first try. So um, it is a pretty unique uh, box. I, when I finished it, I thought that I wanted to build another box uh, like it, 
and they had a sale. So of course I bit for the sale too. <laughs> so anyway, um, the second one I haven't, uh, have not put together yet. I want to, but uh, just haven't had time to put it together. And I, I'm going to use that one um, downstairs with uh, some of my older ham radio equipment. So it's quite a, quite a unique device. It's um, very well constructed. The, um, it's like a Heath kit. It's got step-by-step uh, -step instructions. So if you can uh, solder on PC boards, you can build a kit. So anyway, I won't take any more time. Uh, thanks for letting me show this project off. Thank you, Howard. That was great. Uh, does anybody have any questions for Howard? Uh, Don does. Okay. Yeah, Howard. Uh, what kind? Of, what what kind of price do you have on a kit? Uh, the kits with all the parts would uh, be about uh, three hundred and fifty dollars. Oh, that's not bad. No, it's not a, what it does. There's a lot. There's a lot to this kit when you realize um, uh, what it does, and and you can do everything by a flip of a switch. So it's. Coaxial, really can do coaxial relays are expensive. Yeah, they are. The relays are expensive, and you know, there's a, a large PC board in the other box that contains all the relays. There's uh, uh, nine different relays. Any other questions? Okay, well, I guess we're ready for the next uh, suspect to talk about something in their ham shack. Uh, well, I, I, I can go. Uh, it, it's not in my ham shack. It's actually in my truck. It's my go box. And I just, I, I got it. I just got it out of the truck. Uh, I don't know if people can see this. But th this is the go box and point the camera down. Yeah, there we are. Is now, that better? Now we can. Yeah, yeah, the camera needs to point at the bottom of the box, right? Yeah, a little bit more down. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Uh, this is a. It's a go box. Dan Edwards made this for me. I don't know if he still uh, is willing to do that, but the I disconnect the my radio from my truck. From the truck's battery with uh, using uh, Anderson power poles, uh, I connect it to the the battery in here. That's uh, the 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 power poles are right in here. So you connect the radio. You, you could, the radio fits it inside the opening here, and the you connect it to the the battery. It, it's got the battery. The antenna, it has the three components for a radio. It's got the antenna, the power supply, and the, and the radio, the transceiver. So all three components are in here if you add the radio. Uh, connect it to the, the radio to the, to the battery, and you can just carry it around like this. It, it, it's uh, very portable. Uh, it's good for... Uh, taking on disasters, you, uh, it's good for the bike ride. It's excellent for the bike rides. And uh, everything is, is fully self-contained in here to operate a radio. It's, uh, it, it's really very good. And, and like I said, uh, Don Edwards will, you know, he, he made this box for me. Dan Edwards made this box for me. And I don't know if he's still willing to do it, but he just, he did it for the, he, he didn't charge labor. He just uh, charged the, the cost of the, the, the battery and the antenna. So it's, uh, he did an excellent job. I've had this for years and uh, uh, I think that's it. That's, uh, it, it's, it's very portable and uh, great for emergencies. Any questions? What kind of a radio do you use in there? I, I have a, a Kenwood a dual band transceiver that I, I've had for years and it, it still works uh, like the, the day I bought it. 
Uh, what size battery do you have in there, uh, Paul? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's a. Uh, I, I, I don't know. What, what does this look like? Looks like about a seven amp hour sealed. Yeah, acid. that's an alarm. Yeah, probably a seven alarm amp or nine amp, something like that, maybe, I'm guessing. Yeah, those are 12 volts and like between seven and nine amp hours. Those, those are the batteries that people use in alarms. Okay. okay. Okay, well, do we have another person that'd like to uh, talk about their uh, project or equipment? Actually, Aaron wants to, and then and then let me cue me up after Aaron, because I, I want to talk about the uh, the remote, actually. I can show you how this Oh, good. Up. Yeah, good. So I'll be really quick. I had to pull everything over to the table since all my gears on the other side of my office. Uh, so three items. One is my uh, unit in scanner. This is the uh, SD... Uh, 200. Uh, unfortunately, it's not on. It's a multicolor. You can put in your uh, zip code um, and it um, has an SD card built into it and it accesses the uh, database that's on the SD card for all the frequencies in the zip code that you've put in. Uh, you can select how many mile range from your zip code, which is pretty cool. And you can also um, update it via um, some various different websites if you subscribe to that uh, service. Um, what's really cool is, is you can hit, um, so if it's like uh, uh, Amador County Sheriff, you can just like hit um, one of these buttons here for department and then it just stays on that department, which is uh, pretty cool. Um, the other one is not the radio, but the stand. This is one of the uh, Archon stands. Sometimes, it, you know, sometimes the there's another company that um, that uh, markets them as the it, it ain't moving stand. It's actually a very heavy base, so it's great for hanging your mic and your uh, remote head on it as well. So that was from Archon um, mounts. And the last item is actually my whip antenna on my uh, Baofeng, and I wasn't really sure if I was, you know, knew that these antennas would add more range to these five watt bow things. But uh, two weeks ago, I was up 88 at about 6,000 foot elevation. And on Simplex, I was talking to Citrus, Citrus Heights in Sacramento on my five watts. So those are my three items. Questions? Aaron. Sir, how much, how much did the whip antenna cost? I think it was twenty nine ninety five. Nice. Uh, this is a diamond. This is a diamond antenna for the for the Baofeng. Yeah, I think the original manufacturer of that kind of antenna was Nagoya. Um, but they, there's a diamond. There's a Nagoya. There's some other Japanese. Um, yep. Uh, and I always tell anybody who buys a Baofeng who's a ham. To actually get one of those antennas because it's way better and it has and they make them in all in all different bases so mm -hmm. you can get one with a regular sma for like a like a yesu or something but they yep. also make them with the reverse sma which is what motorola radios use and the bow fan mm. it was pretty amazing on that uh, contact to uh to um um to Sacramento, I didn't realize that I was line of sight to Sacramento at that elevation. I was actually looking the other way. I was looking towards Stockton, but uh, um, but it came in crystal clear. So super pleased with that. Okay, over to you, Joe. Yeah. Okay. So what I want to do is this is something all of you can use. Um which is my remote radio. So I use a service called Remote Hams. So um, the aim the camera at the radio part of this will be very brief. Um, let's try not to make you get sick. But anyway, so the radio over there, that's a garden variety IC 7600 and there's an amplifier on the far side of it uh, and that sort of thing. But that's actually not the important part of this demo. 
right? Because the, the radio is just a radio. Everybody has a radio um, uh, and that sort of thing. But the important thing is the software that's hooked up to the radio. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen and try to actually share. I'll show you the back end first, then I'll show you the website. Um, whoops, wait a minute. Okay, so are you seeing something now? Not yet. Oh, wait a minute. I gotta do that and then hit share. Okay. There we go. So now you're actually looking at a screen that's on another computer. Um, I have a separate little, one of these little NUC computers that actually uh, runs the remote uh, and some other stuff. But this is the software. See, that's a, that's a Windows machine. That's actually running Windows 7. Don't tell anyone. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but um, so this is a Windows machine. The software is called um, this. You download the software if you have a radio that you want to actually hook up to this. And so right now, this radio is hooked up through a USB connection from the PC directly to the back of the IC7600. Because the 7600 has a USB connector. And you can run the sound and the, and the control over the USB connector. So that makes it really easy for this kind of radio. And a lot of newer radios have that. But if you have an older radio, you probably have to use something like a signal link USB. I, have that, I had that set up for my old, my old uh, 756 Pro 2, which didn't have the USB connector. Um, but this is the log file of what's going on on the remote. There's actually hundreds of people who have accounts on this remote uh, and use it. So during the day, like this is, there's a chat window, so you can actually um, chat with other people who are logged into the remote. There's no one logged in right now. You'd see their, their thing up here if they, if they were. Um, you can actually, there's, a, there's an activity log that says, you know, the last person here changed the frequency to 3952, right? Which is what's on the radio right now. Uh, and, you can, and they also transmit it. They hit the TXDU one, right, uh, to do that. I have some frequency memory set up here so that if somebody wants to like, when they connect to the radio, if they don't know what to listen to, they can listen to uh, frequencies on here. So I have a bunch of HF nets on here and also a couple of CB channels that I can hear uh, on here because it's an HF radio, right? I, this is the same radio I use on HF and six meters. Um, and then you as an owner, all right, now, now we're getting really slow here. You can control what it says when you, when you log in, when someone logs into it. Uh, and then you do that on the publishing screen and you can control whether your site is visible on remotehams.com, which is the next thing I'll show you. But this is the server software. Uh, users don't run this software, it just runs in the background. But I will show you now the website. Hang on, I have to share screen again. And which one do I have? Which one is it? Which one is it? Where is it? There we are. There. Uh, okay, so now we're on my web browser that's on the screen. This is the remotehams.com website, actually. If I go to the home page, you can see this is what you'll see when you get there. The client is the, the client is the thing you download to use this. So if you you have to create an account on this website, and then when you go to the website, you can this this client public alpha thing, that's the client that uh, uh, that's the client that you can download for a PC, like a Windows PC. Uh, there's also a client for Android. There is no client for, uh, for iOS. So if you're an iPad or iOS person, you are out of luck uh, on this. But any of you who have a Windows machine or whatever can, look, can download this and you can actually get an account and you can log in and use my radio like you're in my house. Um, uh, there's a sign up screen here, which tells you, you know, it's a registration agreement and you have to accept the terms. Um, let me go back here. Um, this is, this is the uh, chat rooms uh, that are on here. I think I'm logged in, right? I'm logged in, right? It's a little flaky here because I'm uh, there. So when you're on the website, you can see different things. You can set up your account. Uh, you can get messages on the website uh, and do this. But the main thing you want this site for is if your user is, you need to set up your account. You upload your, um, matter of fact, I'll show you. You upload your 
license on here too. So that somebody like me who gets a request from somebody named, you know, ka 6 foo or whatever, gets, uh, can see the actual uh, FCC license that you've uploaded. So, cause I don't, I don't let people transmit on my node. Most, most nodes are open for receive. Like you can just go log into them. But if you want to control the node, you have to be licensed. And so the owners will actually want you to have your license uh, uploaded uh, when you do that. Um, but most of what this website about is, is about is um, uh, is about logging in, setting up your license in here, and then downloading the software, running the software on your own machine uh, to do that. But once you do that, you now have access to um, uh, you now have access to the uh, to the internet or uh, through the internet to this receiver. Um, actually, let me turn that off. Um, and what that lets you do is you can use a microphone and a speaker on your PC and, and usually the space bar or something to transmit. And you can actually, you know, tune my radio to a different frequency or a lot of people listen. I have a lot of overseas users who come in and they want to hear their signal in the United States. So what they do is they tune to the same frequency they're transmitting on and then they transmit in Indonesia or Netherlands or whatever and see if they can be heard on here. And there's people who use this for FT8, right? There's there are people who use, uh, I haven't ever done that myself. So you'd have to Google for exactly how to make that work. Uh, wait a minute. Somebody wants to be let in. All right. Um, but uh, it's pretty cool. And I have probably four or 500 users throughout the world who have signed up at least once. And there's probably 10 to 12 people a day who actually use my radio to talk to people or participate in that or whatever. So, so, Joe. Sure. Uh, I have a program called Hamsphere that you can, you can uh, listen to the, the, the ham frequencies on your computer. So that sounds something like similar to that, to what you have, but you don't connect it to your radio. You just, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a program online that uh, you can actually uh, tune in radio frequencies. Are you familiar with that? Uh, I'm looking that up right now. Um, the Hamsphere is, it's not actually using radios, right? It's kind of right. like, kind of like Skype, right? Exactly, exactly, yes. Um, so it's, that's a, uh, that's a system that, that essentially uses the internet completely. Whereas remote hams, what you're doing is you're actually logging into to someone's receiver. Actually, I didn't show right. you the list of online receivers. I wanted to, I want to actually do that. Let me see if I can get that back up because I, right. Online remotes here, let me just share that for one second. Uh, there. So this is this is the list of when you go when you go onto the site, you'll see there's a bunch of stuff like documentation and sign up and things like that. But one of the things you can do is go to online remotes, and there's 264 of them, and you can see these are kind of roughly by location, I think, because most of these are in Europe that you're seeing right there. Uh, SV is in Greece, IT is in Italy, IK is in Italy too, I think. ZL is New, uh, New Zealand. Um, and if you searched around here long enough, you would find Volcano Remote, which is actually what my thing is called uh, on here. But uh, so you can see there's actually a lot of radios in a lot of places. Some of them are UHF or VHF. So like every remote has its own capability. So if I look at this one and well, say if I go to this guy and and uh, it's, it's a welcome to my remote using a Baofeng UV5R and a short antenna so he's oh, it, he literally has a Baofeng that's remote in in Sweden the critical thing is he's in Sweden right so if you want to talk to people in Sweden maybe you can talk through his Baofeng in Sweden um but there's also people who have radios like mine, conventional HF radios. Uh, and then there are a few, um, uh, there's a few people who have like the very wide band SDRs. Uh, 
uh, so you can listen to a huge number of, of frequencies uh, and things like that. So it's kind of cool, like if you, especially it's great for hams who don't have, I have like a half a dozen hams who are like disabled or something and they live in like uh, assisted living communities and things like that. And so they log in, they actually log into my radio and do, you know, ham stuff uh, without actually having to have equipment at their, at their location because they can't. Anyway, that's enough of that, but I thought I would let you know. And if you want to log in, go to remotehams.com. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Joe? Too bad you can't do uh, CW. You know, I think there's people who do MCW through it. Uh, you know, like, audio, like modulated CW instead of actual real CW that there are people actually do that through it, but I don't know of any way to actually do real CW. Mm. Mm. Well, uh, any questions of Joe? Well, it's very interesting, Joe. I know uh, you worked hard to keep that on the air for hams all over the world. That's really great. Uh, do we have anybody else that's a suspect to uh, talk about their uh, uh, equipment and projects? I'm looking across the uh, Judy. Do you have anything to talk about? <laughs> I want to know when you're going to start the lunches again. Oh, when are we going to start lunches again? Well, <laughs> I I think pretty soon. You know, I keep saying that, um, but uh, a lot of us are getting our shots in right now. Uh, so I would think uh, maybe in 30 days, we could think about uh, lunches and how many people like to go to lunch. How's that I, sound? I, I know uh, Pearls is open now for indoor dining and uh, I'm scheduled for my second shot uh, next Thursday. So like you said, uh, a lot of people are, are getting their first and second shots and uh, I, I believe Mace Meadows is open also. In fact, I know they are, uh, but I think that it's restricted to Thursdays through Sundays, something like that. But uh, I, so they might be open on Thursdays, uh, but I know Pearls is open because I just had breakfast there today. So uh, yeah, there, there are restaurants in uh, Jackson and Sutter Creek as well. So, you know, I don't think we'll um uh, las minas is also open now again uh for meals so i think you know in 30 days a lot of us are going to have both our shots uh they just came up today uh the county did with a ad from safeway uh down in uh, martell and they're uh uh they just went online with offering shots at uh 4:33 this afternoon, and uh, anyway, I was I've been watching all day, hoping something would open up, and it did. Just about at the time I was ready to throw my iPad uh, down on the floor and forget it. <laughs> and uh, anyway, I think I was the first one to to uh, uh, sign up, but uh, or close to it, and uh, so I get my first shot next uh, Thursday. So good. Anyway, it's uh, people are starting to get connected with that, and I think we we need to think about that um, probably in about thirty days. Hopefully, uh, you know, people under seventy five will start getting their shots. But you know, we have a sizable group of people that are fairly old and uh, will be protected. Does that sound good, Judy? Oh, she's got her mic off. Okay. <laughs> yes, sounds good. Yeah, sounds good, yeah. Okay. Anyone else like to talk about their equipment or projects? Well. Uh, hey, successful night. Oh, okay, good. Uh, go ahead, uh, Robert. Okay, Howard. Uh, I don't know if anybody has... Uh, checked out these uh, nano VNAs or not. 
Uh, let me change my screen here for a second. Uh, there we go. Uh, okay, so uh, this is a nano VNA. Can everybody see it? Yeah. Okay. Well, these range price from about uh, fifty-five dollars up to about one hundred and seventy dollars, uh, and it's a very capable little DNA. Uh, this is the larger size. And I paid yeah. under a hundred dollars for it, and um, it makes a great little antenna analyzer. Uh, just to as a demo, I hooked up um, a little antenna here, and if you look at the screen, um, Hold it up a little higher. Yeah. How's this? That's good. Yeah. Good. You look at the screen. And if I extend the antenna, you'll see. Uh, at the moment, I'm I've got it set up to show the uh, SWR, uh, but it also uh, uh, shows uh, uh, a Smith chart and shows uh, um, uh, um, return reflection uh, from your antenna. Plus, of course, it's a two-port device. And so uh, you can uh, also use it for characterizing filters and such. It probably does 80% of what a $3,000 VNA from 10 years ago would have done. Any questions? Uh, where can you uh, pick these up, Robert? I purchased this one from Amazon but they're also readily available from eBay. What you need to do is make sure that you get the uh, original version because there's some knockoffs from, well, they're all made in China, uh, but the one that I have is um, uh, designed and uh, um, commissioned, if you will, by uh, a gentleman somewhere in Europe, I forget where, uh, but he's done all of the software for it or firmware. And um, uh, it's really an excellent device for the money. I mean, I've used it to characterize, well, oh, in the range online, uh, I've got an older version. Uh, the range is from, I think, um, oh, 100 kilohertz or something up to a gigahertz online. But the newest ones go up to um, uh, three gigahertz, as a matter of fact. And they only sell for about $165 on eBay. So it's a really terrific little device. Like I say, you can do Smith charts, um, SWR, um, um, you know, a number of, you can even uh, characterize, you can even measure coax length with the thing because it's got a TDR built into it. So it's really a fantastic little instrument uh, for the money. And uh, personally, if you got uh, poor eyesight like I do, I'd recommend getting the larger screen, which is going to cost you about 150 bucks or just over. Uh, but anyway, um, you know, that's it for me. Oh, it, it comes in a little, a nice little box, comes in a nice little box that includes um, uh, what you need to calibrate it in the way of an open, short, and load. Hopefully you can see this. And yeah. So you've got an open, short, load, and you've got a couple of short uh, uh, cables. And of course, if you need to connect it up to a PL, um, uh, 259, you're going to need an adapter, and uh, these are readily available, of course, SMA to, uh, what is it, SO239 or whatever, and uh, so anyway, it's a great little device. I'd uh, recommend it to, to anybody who's uh, dilly-dallied about getting an antenna analyzer like I did for a long time, because I just wasn't willing to pay, you know, 350 bucks or more for, you know, one of the nicer uh, rig experts or something. So, and besides- uh, Is it battery powered? Yeah, it's battery powered. 
Oh, plus the other thing is it's got a USB port and you can hook it up to your computer. You want a really big screen, take screenshots, print them out. Uh, it's really a great little device. Okay. Any questions of Robert? Okay. Well, it sounds like a pretty neat uh, device. Uh, when we get meeting in, uh, uh, in our regular club meeting, I'd like you to bring it along with uh, uh, some other devices. Uh, Don's got the uh, rig expert and several of us uh, have uh, the MFJ. So uh, we could uh, have quite a, a little uh, uh a little uh, study on these different devices when we could actually uh, see them uh, one against the other and we could uh, do some uh, do some tests you know to see uh, how accurate they are how how well they uh, record information and it'd be really interesting to have all of them together and then it'd help people decide what they'd like to acquire if they didn't have anything Absolutely. how's that sound Great idea. Yeah, good. Okay. Uh, I do well, have a do question. Talk, do you want to talk about uh, anything about your cat? <laughs> well, his name's Shelby, and uh, uh, his, his sister is in the other room because Shelby unfortunately has dementia and he doesn't recognize his sister anymore. So when they get together. Oh, gosh. He, he literally tries to kill her. And uh, so they're, they're permanently separated now. So she's in the other room and uh, he's, always, <laughs> he's always in here and he's always on my Zoom meeting. So it's, uh, <laughs> he, he's, uh, I, I inherited to him from my girlfriend when she passed away. Oh, God. Uh, I inherited both of them. So I've had them now for three years and uh, by myself and uh, is a, he's a North American, they're both North American tabbies, North American short hair tabbies. And yeah, they've been very pretty good. good. Uh, do we have Don, any other Don had uh, a show and tells uh, today? Don had a question, I think. On I that. have a question. Uh, hey, Robert, what, was that uh, uh, Tango Vicar uh, Redi, uh, Romeo is the initials? Oh, it's uh, <clears throat> the item that I showed. The VNA is a nano, N A N O VNA, and the model I have is the nano VNA dash F. I can show a picture of the uh, ad on uh, Amazon here. Give me one, one quick second here. This is the ad on Amazon, uh, bingo. Whoops, is that it? Yeah, F2, V2, got it. F V2. What's that? Yeah, okay, yeah, that's a nice uh, size. Is it, uh, is the screen showing the, um, the ad on Amazon? Yes. yes, yes it is. Okay, good deal. Uh, okay. So anyway. Not quite sure how to get back to the camera here, guys. There, there you go. go. Yeah, got it. Hey, very I, good. I did that for you. Uh, do we Robert. have any um, other show and tells here tonight? Okay. Well, it was a very good idea, Joe, to do this. We got, got uh, some involvement of our members, and uh, uh, we'll have to get our heads together for another program. Uh, uh, next month, assuming we have a Zoom meeting. So I'll turn it back to you or Paul. Paul, okay. I have a, Paul, I have something to say. Sure, go ahead, go ahead, Don. Uh, for all ARIES members, and I know Paul knows this, uh, we have a, no, a new OES uh, coordinator in the Sheriff's Department. And uh, I guess uh, Sergeant Silva is no longer doing it. And I've contacted him and I've talked to him and we're gonna arrange a meeting. And I understand uh, Paul and Jason are, know each other quite well already. So uh, just FYI, uh, we may see some changes uh, in our ARIES program. I don't know, 
it's a matter of uh, negotiations with the sheriff's department oes to see how well we can coordinate our efforts uh, to co to help their efforts thank you thank you don and uh, on on that note yeah i know jason very well we spent uh a night together out on a search, uh, search and rescue. Uh, but any, anyway, that uh, uh, the over the last snowstorm when we there were power outages across the you know, all three counties up here, uh, uh, Tuolumne and Calaveras opened uh, uh, warming uh, stations for the the residents so they could go there when the power was out. Uh, Amateur County has historically not opened warming centers. They they just they feel that the the residents are prepared uh, to handle the power outages, and you know I, I don't agree with that. But you know historically that that's what we've always done uh, here in this county. So I, we we won't uh, be called to you know uh, uh, support a warming center. Uh, but we definitely will be called to support the Red Cross. Uh, uh, we open a shelter. Uh, we definitely will be called upon to uh, open uh, support uh, their uh, uh, operations. So that's uh, just uh, it, it'll probably be a very bad uh, fire season again this year. So uh, just be prepared to. Uh, uh, be called uh, upon if you're an ARIES member. All right, uh, back to you, Don. Uh, no, that was fine. Thank you very much. Appreciate All right. it. Yeah, he sounds like a very interesting individual. Okay, and really wanting to uh, communicate with us uh, to see how we can assist in his efforts. Yes, good. Thank you. Uh, Speaking of uh, next month's meeting, I, I'd like to uh, do a program on auto patch. Uh, so if you know, I don't know if we can do that on Zoom or uh, maybe we should hold off until the next in-person meeting. Uh, I don't know, that, uh, it's up to Howard. It's, uh, uh, but for those of you who don't know, auto patch allows you to make phone calls you know, on your radio it patches into the phone network and it's a, a tremendous resource uh, in case of emergencies where there's no cell signal uh, you can actually call 911 from your radio uh, so it's a it's a tremendous resource and uh, i'd like to have a you know, program especially for the newer members that uh, on on uh, using auto patch on your radio so but, but that's up to you howard it's uh, whatever. okay we'll uh, i'll uh get that down uh, as one of the programs for this year for sure fairly soon good good thank you maybe we could do it uh when we get back together in a month or or so and uh uh there are several of the newer members uh ready to uh explore the use of that and we also need to don need to think about uh, getting another class cam cram uh, I have uh, two people that are signed up and I've given the information where they can do some study online and where they can get the manuals and one thing or another and inform them that uh, when we have a class, I will let them know. Good. Excellent. Excellent. You're on top of it. Good. Quick, quick question on that, Howard. Yeah, that, go ahead. Is that for general or one of the other license levels? Uh, the ham cram has been just for the tech. Okay. You know, feeling that after that they could get the book and uh, study, and you know, maybe after getting on the air a little bit as a technician, uh, do that. Um, I think last we, time we gave it. I think we we can give tests for any level at the ham cram. Yeah, we would give all okay. the tests. Okay. We would give. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. We would give all the tests. We we only prepare the materials to cram for the tech. We can do it for general if somebody really wants to, but but at the moment, um, that would have to be a special thing. In the one I do in the Bay Area, we do both tech and general. We don't do extra because it's hard to cram for extra. But right. Yeah, I need to take the step up from tech. 
Good, good. No. If you need a, a book, uh, um, I've got a few books uh, to loan or, or give away if you're interested in uh, one of the study guides. It's not the most current, but it covers everything. And if you had that plus the question pool, which is available online, you should be able to do fine with it. So if you need a book, I don't want to stick it in the mail. It's too expensive to mail anything anymore. But, but no, you can I, certainly swing by I, and pick it up. I have I have a book. Thank you, Howard. I just oh good. Yep. And I would offer that to anyone that would like to upgrade. You know, I've got a couple of uh, general class books uh, that are available here, and also a couple of tech books. Don Don had his hand up. No, I did. Uh, yeah. Oh, Aaron, good. I believe you both did. Go ahead, Aaron, Aaron. I will put you on the list, uh, contact, uh, so you know when we will have the exams, okay? All right? Okay, Jim. Hey, just a comment about meeting next month. As of right now, the clubhouse is still not open because the owner doesn't want to worry about uh, getting a spread or anything. But if it starts clearing up, they should open it up this month. So I'll let you know in uh, in time to uh, to make sure we can get to, we get the call. I can sign up for it as soon as the uh, they open it up. So if you're interested in me doing that, that's fine. I'll do that. Yeah, I'm going to schedule the next meeting as a Zoom meeting, but it is possible it might be open open by then. I don't know. Okay, sounds good. Why don't why don't we for right now plan on Zoom meeting in March and then uh, for sure a April we should be able to meet at the clubhouse but uh, right now why don't we plan on Zoom for March? Yeah, I would believe April would be a good month for sure. I don't know whether March is going to be yet. So right. Okay. Uh, uh, does anybody have any questions about anything? Uh, thank you, thank you, Joe, for setting this up again. It's, this is you, you. You've always kudos, done. Kudos, Joe. Kudos. Yes. Yeah. And there, there might be an opening uh, for a net control operator on a, the the weekly net control. The the first. Uh, it will be the first Tuesday of each month. Uh, uh, Alex, it, it, it seems he's disappeared. So uh, uh, we might need a, a new uh, net control operator for the first Tuesday of every month. Or if somebody wants to uh, do uh, two meetings uh, or two weekly meetings a month, uh, they can uh, they, they can do that. But uh, as of right now, we... we well, we, we'll probably need a new uh, net control operator uh, for the first Tuesday of the month. So uh, anybody who, who's thinking about doing that, uh, please uh, contact uh, either Joe or Judy and they'll, they'll get the script to you. It's, it's very wow. easy. And Joe or Carrie? Carrie is the secretary now? Yeah, Carrie is the secretary now. Okay, yes. Uh, so yeah, that's good. Uh, I've been doing it the last couple of months because nobody's been showing up on the first Monday, um, but I'm the fourth Monday normally. So right, right, exactly. I only want to do it once because I don't want to be tied down to, you know, multiple yes. weeks. That, then that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. So uh, does anybody have any other questions? Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, I was wondering if. if Judy, do you um, need to get rid of a couple of t-shirts? Uh, yes, it's a men's large and a men's extra large. And how would I contact you about those? Uh, you, Carrie, the secretary, has them. Um, let me see. I'm here. Okay. okay. Do you want a phone number? Yeah. Okay. Hang on. I was doing my space bar. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Phone number? Oh, thank you. Yes. 
did you want my phone number to? Yes, yes, please. Get that shirt. Okay. Yes. It's 209-293-2231. Okay. And I'm a dumb and off on the uh, treasurer totals. If maybe the treasurer can stay on after the meeting, please. Okay. Um, and the, the price for the club shirt, either size would be $23.65. Okay. Okay, so I think we're done with the regular content of this meeting at this point. Um, so I'm going to leave the Zoom turned on for another 10 minutes or so in case people want to chat. Okay, uh, I, I'll, I'll call the meeting closed at 8.13 p.m. <laughs>